So recently I've been looking into what is the appropriate time to hire a property manager or should you self-manage? And this question is a good question. If you're buying something out of state, you're either moving out of state or you're thinking long term, we're going to have multiple properties, multiple units, and you want to consider is property management right for me? How much does it cost? How is it going to eat into my proceeds? And how can I find a property manager I can trust? So now either you're looking to buy your first property or you already have property. And if you are looking to buy the first property, I can tell you, if you plan on living in the property, it is a very good idea to be the property manager or the landlord. And one tip is you can just let your tenants know if you're the property manager, you're not the owner, just because if you're brand new to this, I'm not saying they would take advantage, but it is just a note. You can just say you're the property manager just to keep things on the safe side there. When you first get started, and there's probably a million questions going through your head, you know, where do I get a lease? Where do I get an agreement? How do I screen tenants? What do I do if I inherit tenants? What if they're late on rent? What if they're extremely low on rent? There's a million questions in there. But the main thing that you want to consider is you want to have the systems in place to deal with one rental. So it could be dealt with two, three, four, five, and so on. How many buildings you plan on having over time. So first off, if you are buying a property, you definitely absolutely want to ask, are there verbal agreements in place or is there a written lease? If there's a lease or a tenancy at will agreement, can I have a copy of that? Because if you do not have that, it could be fictitious information on the MLS, unfortunately, of what the buyer, not the buyer, what the tenant says they're paying in rent. And I would hate to see you take a property, take ownership, close, meet with the tenants, and they say, oh no, I don't pay that. <laughs> then you're left in a huge hole because you didn't know what they paid for rent if they had a verbal agreement. So you definitely want to get a hold of the lease or the tenancy at will agreement. If not, you want to do what is called an estoppel agreement, which is a very similar document, but it just basically has a document that the landlord and the ten tenant signs and it says how long they've been owning the apartment, what utilities pay in their name, the name of the folks living in the apartment, the ages, and you can also say what utilities are in their name. If they have pets on the apartment, you could ask a few questions on this estoppel. I know when I did it, I had my attorney draft the estoppel and during the transaction, the landlord gave it to the tenants and they filled it out. So I knew what I was kind of walking into before I closed. So I highly recommend you get an estoppel or the lease agreements so you know what you're walking into when you do take over the building. And also you want to consider how the rent is going to be collected. I would not recommend cash. If they are long term, hopefully it's either check or I like using online software such as Cozy. I've had great success with that. Be curious to see if you guys use any other programs out there that may be beneficial when you are collecting rent. In addition, you want to have a list of your contractors, your go to handyman or the people you might need plow guy in Massachusetts on a short term basis. If something does happen, that's catastrophic. You want to fix all immediate problems immediately and the biggest ones, anything to do with water. So plumbing, things of that nature, you don't want any flooding basements or anything crazy like that. Now, we all know that the biggest killer of the property is a vacancy, but even a bigger killer than a vacancy is selecting the wrong tenant. Just made a video recently on tenant screening, which does cover the tips you want to do when you're screening tenants. You want to be very thorough when screening just because you're putting your assets on the line, making sure that you, they take care of your property. You don't want to let the wrong person in because in Massachusetts, at least that could be a very costly five, six, six thousand dollar mistake by choosing the wrong person. If you're in a rush to get a vacancy, ideally you want to start advertising right when they give the notice, you know, the 30 day notice. Typically it should be 45 or so because you want a calendar month in between. But once you get that notice, you want to start showing the property to contending legitimate potential tenants. If you're unsure how to do this, you can either consider having a real estate agent market the property for you, take the pictures, go through the screening process. Then you have a better understanding of exactly what you're looking for and what you're not looking for. It's best to have minimum standards that I talked in previously. But again, the goal is to not have the vacancy there in order to keep the property filled and keep the money coming in. One thing you want to consider is the distance from the property to where you currently live. 
if you are investing within 30 minutes to an hour, that's probably a safe amount of distance that I would keep a property long term. I don't see an issue with self-managing that property as long as you have good tenants and they stay. There shouldn't be many issues there. When it does turn over, you're probably going to have to spend some time fixing the unit, doing the move out, making sure that if you do a security deposit, going through that process, fixing up the unit, taking pictures of the unit, getting ready to, for the unit to go to the market and advertising the unit if you are showing it yourself, possibly do a landlord open house. If it is 30 minutes to an hour, it shouldn't take that long. When you do do these showings, you want to stagger them probably 15 minute intervals because I would say it is not super common for tenants to always show up to showings. So if you schedule four or five in an hour period, you might get three to show up. Depending on how you decide to screen, it's either over the phone or through email, just to make sure they meet the minimum standards. So number one, they're not wasting your time and you're not wasting their time as well. And now again, you may or may not know that the management fees can be negotiable. So if it's just one single family residence or if it's multiple properties, you can ask for references from the property manager or if you can ask to speak to a current client of theirs. You can ask for a current lease agreement. You could ask through what's their screening process. You could ask to show them a recent marketing or properties you filled, show the conditions of the units, how quickly to get back with vacancies. But this is all typically spilled out in the agreement or the contract that is written up. So the ballpark for that is anywhere from eight to 10. You know, 12 is kind of high, but eight to 10% is typical for what exactly you're gonna be paying the property manager for. That's gonna be collecting rents. That's gonna be doing the tenant turnover, handling all requests, having the go-to team of anything that goes wrong. You're completely hands off on the property. The goal would just be to know where your rent is deposited on a monthly basis and have no headaches. That's the goal when you hire it. They just have to reach out as little as possible. Unless the repairs are over a certain amount that you see in the contract, it's typically $250, $300 or above, they go to you to ensure, hey, we need this repair done. And they, they call you and coordinate that. Also, one point to consider is there's more distance between the tenant and you as the owner. If you are the owner of the property and the tenant knows you're managing the properties yourself, I don't think things would get any worse. But again, if the, you could just say, oh, well, this is the screening process. This is what we need to follow. I need two forms of verification for, not two forms of verification. I need two pay stubs and I need a valid license. I need a social. You can say what you need, what the property management company requires if you are a property management company and not just saying that's what I need because I'm the landlord. You know, it could be finicky, but overall you need to screen thoroughly when going through the process. So again, at the end of the day, you want to weigh the pros and the cons. If it's a first investment, highly recommend self-managing. You will get a hang of the Massachusetts laws if you're in Massachusetts and you want to have very thorough a lease or a tenancy at will agreement or both, but probably two separate docs, a very thorough screening process, a process for inheriting tenants and a process for essentially collect collecting rent. These four main pillars ideally is your main job and being the main contact when stuff goes wrong with the property. I wouldn't fear too much if you are in the property, you, you are working with tenants in the building, not a major concern to me, at least on my end. Your end might be different, but again, that's what you do on the due diligence, on the buying side, when you have a property under agreement. You want to make sure you meet the tenants within, I'd say 48 hours or so of owning the building, going over a new agreement, have them sign, show them, and you over how to pay rent in the whole nine yards when you are inheriting. If you are doing an increase, that's something you need to go through as well at that time. But if not, you just want to make sure they know exactly where to pay and there's no tricky things such as, oh, I paid last month's rent. Oh, they have a security because everything should be deposited to you at closing. You can see you have what you out from what units. There shouldn't be any questions when you close on the property. Overall, hope you found this helpful. Gave you some ideas if whether self-managing is best or property management is what you're looking to do. Let me know in the comments below. And keep in mind that your first deal is going to be your hardest deal overall, absolutely by a long shot because you're nervous about the process. You're not sure you overanalyze it and you don't want to get into analysis paralysis. Keep overanalyzing because the interest rates might go up. Less properties are on the market. It might be seasonal. It's way too many factors to look into long term if you are getting into stuck in analysis paralysis.